Okay, let's talk about, about vectors. Vectors and scalars. You guys did some reading about this. What's the difference? Oh, and I have those readings back. I'm going to pause this and hand them back so you, for reference. It's rubbish. We've already been over there. It's really rubbish. <laughs> it, it was worth it. It was worth it. Um, so, but what importantly, not whether Zach's no. poem no. haiku no. is 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 rubbish. You're supposed or not. to. If you yeah, you're supposed. If he had he done the work, you would have known that. Oh, but what's the difference between a scalar and a vector? Yes. Well, a scalar could be expressed as just like one term that is in it. Okay. And it really doesn't have direction like vectors do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the difference. Scalars here have something called a magnitude. Magnitude is how big is it? And this could be length. volume, time, that sort of thing. Lots of different things, lots of different measurements are scalar measurements. Um, another, just so with that when we see them in class, I'll, I'll point this out, uh, energy would be another one. You can have a certain amount of energy, Can but I hear your attention, please? Anyone in 10th grade? Okay, and then vectors, they also have a magnitude because we care how big they are, but they have include direction as well. Okay, so how big and in what direction? And so we have lots of different examples of these two. These are used primarily in physics. Um, but very often, because these interact with each other, it's important to include the direction because two different directions will interact with each other completely differently. So we have things like velocity, acceleration, force. Um, also included in this would be various different types of fields. So like a gravitational field we know a lot about, or an electromagnetic field, that sort of thing. All of these, it's important what direction they are acting, so they are vectors. Yes, just like the character in Despicable Me. So in committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. <laughs> Um, so here's some good examples. Uh, as mentioned in that short video clip, which you people watching at home didn't get, but you've probably seen Despicable Me, um, it's often represented by an arrow. These are vectors, right? Yep. How else, so how, how will a textbook tell you if something is a vector? Bold it's in bold, right? So we might have force here, and I'll just color it in. So that would be a vector, whereas something like this would be a scalar. Now force is always a vector, but and then there's another way. How else can we write? indicate that something is a vector quantity. Yep. So you said that's an arrow over it? Yeah, so that's the other way. That if we have a regular one and then we put an arrow, that is also a vector quantity. So you'll see these two ways very often. Books are bolded because it's a lot easier to just bold something than to also put an arrow over it. But you might see either way when we're writing it, of course, we'll just put the arrow over it because indicating that something is bolded is pretty hard to do um, just by writing it out. Now, 
Okay, so we're going to talk about what we do with vectors. We're not going to talk about too much about specific vectors. We'll get them <coughs> little by little as we go through the course. So like, how do we figure out a force vector, that sort of thing. Um, but we're just going to take vectors as a general thing right now and see what we can do with them. Because as I said, this is, if you have two vectors, like if you have, um, if you have three liters of fluid, and you add another two liters of fluid, it's very easy, it's just five liters. But if you have a force of three newtons acting on something in the easterly direction, and then you add two, a force of two newtons acting southerly direction, well now you've got something pushing this way, and this way, three newtons, two newtons, and we can't handle it just by adding the numbers up anymore. We have to do it a bit differently. So we're gonna talk about a couple different things that we can do with vectors that we kinda of have to do in order to figure out how we can put them together. The first is breaking into components. So vector components. Vector components means that we break it up in two convenient, along two convenient axes. So these are the, the, well, the components, the parts of it, that point only along those two convenient axes. And I say two, although, and we're only really gonna do two dimensions, but you could extend it to three dimensions in the exact same way. So let's set up an axis system to start with. Let's say we're just going to use x and y for a lot of these. Um, the, it's also easy to represent these with north and south if we do uh, compass directions. And let's say that we have a vector here, and that vector is 10.0 newtons, and it's pointing in some direction, let's call this that looks like about 35 degrees there. So that's a vector representation. It gives us what direction is it pointing relative to our other into our y and x coordinates. And it tells us how big it is, the magnitude. But if we were to try and add that to another vector, say going in this direction and see what the total, the, which we call a resultant is, it's pretty challenging to do. So we're gonna discuss a couple ways that we can simplify this or at least make it doable. The first is breaking it up into components. And components here, we see that we could actually have, we have a component that's pointing in the x direction and we have a component that's pointing in the y direction. So I'm gonna draw out arrows that form a right triangle with my vector. And I certainly could go up here and over there as well. That would be fine. Now, if I want to know the x component, let's say that this is my force. If I want to know the x component, I call that F with a little subscript x. Well, that's a side of a triangle, right? If I'm looking at this side of the triangle, compared to my angle, what would I call this side? The adjacent, what would I call this side? Hypotenuse. Which trick function relates the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Cosine. cosine. So I could write that the cosine of my angle of 35 degrees is equal to my adjacent side, which I call little f, or f with an x, over my hypotenuse, which I call the force, which is 10 newtons, I know that one but I wanna know how much of it's pointing in the x direction, so I'd multiply both sides with this f, and I'd get that my fx, sorry, I'll put it here, fx is equal to my original force, the 10 newtons, times the cosine of that angle. And we'll figure out what it is in a moment. Over here, well, it, there, this would be called the y component. 
which side of the triangle is that relative to my angle? It's the opposite. So if I have opposite and hypotenuse, I know those are related by the sine function. So sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is the one, the Fy, over the hypotenuse, which is the F. So rearranging this, if I want to find out how big this is, I could multiply F times the sine of 35. So let's, let's figure out how big those are for each of these. If we took our force, which is 10 newtons, times the cosine of 35 degrees, what would we get? What would we get from the Fy? Newtons. Now the only thing we're lacking here, these are still arrows pointing in the directions of these forces, so they need a direction indicator too. Um, and I, we're kind of introducing a couple things. If we're pointing right along the x direction, we could say in the x direction, but there's a shorthand in math to do that. We, we put x with a little, we call it a hat, x hat. And that says pointing in the x direction. And this is pointing in the y direction, so we put a little y hat. This is what we call breaking things into components. It's important because, and as we'll see in just a little bit, it allows us to add things up. Because we can add things that are going in one direction, that are all parallel to y. Or we could add things that are all parallel to x. We just can't add x and y directly. So let's say that we're going to keep a hold of this one. And let's say that we have two people pulling on something. One is pulling with 10 newtons of force in this direction. Another is pulling on the same object with 9.0 newtons. And this angle is 20 degrees, 20.0. I'm going to take a break here and have you guys figure out how much of this 9 newtons is pointing in the y direction and how much is pointing in the x direction. So you're going to draw one component like that, one component like that, and apply the same trig rules to see what is my f and I'll call it y2 for this one. And what is my fx2 for this one? How does that 9 newtons get split up into different components? So if we're looking at these, this is, compared to my angle here of 20.0 degrees, this is my adjacent side. And I know the hypotenuse, so I know I'm relating via cosine. I've done this lot, so I don't usually write the first step of cosine 35 equals these two. If you're still working on it, I would because it will help. But I remember that it's, oh, that's going to be my hypotenuse times the cosine of my angle. So that would be the 9 newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees. And that would be 8.45, so with two sig figs, 8.5 newtons. And then over here, well now I'm looking at the opposite angle, or opposite side of my triangle, and the hypotenuse, so I know that's going to be sine, and just like we did up above, that would be 9.0 newtons times the sine of my angle of 20 degrees, 0 degrees. And so my x component here, would be 3.07, so 3.1 newtons. Sorry, 
Well, y is this way, right? So this would be y hat. This would be x hat to okay. indicate direction. And the hat here, these are called unit vectors. They don't have a magnitude of their own. At this time, would all 11th graders that would like their pictures taken or retaken? As I was saying, um, these are called unit vectors that indicate the direction, but their magnitude is one, so they're not changing this value. They're just saying what direction is it pointing. But now, if we had these two vectors that we wanted to get together and say that we're, we are <clears throat> applying both of these to the same object, and we want to figure out what direction is that object going to experience the net or total force, we have my, this is our F2, here's our F1. We want to go back and use those components because it's pretty hard to just add these two. We will discuss how. But it's hard to add those two. So let's look at what we've got as a result. Well, in the x direction, we have 3.1 newtons going from our x2. And we have up here, we figured out 8.19 newtons both of those in the same direction. Well, we can add both of those if they're in the same direction. What would we get? That x equals or x times 2.1 squared right? X, colon. Okay. Yeah. So you could say F total in the X or whatever. This is the total force in that direction. What would we get? 3.1 plus 18.19. Eight. 8.19. 8. Thank you. What was it? 11.29. No. Why not? Sig. Not really sig figs, but similar rules. What's the rule for addition? Fewest decimal places. So although it would be 11.29, how would we have to record it? 11.3. Newtons in the x hat direction. What about in our y direction? Well, we've got one pointing up, up and one pointing down. I'm going to record them both. Um, 5.74 from that one in the <coughs> y hat direction. And we have down here 8.5. So is that what we get negative? Right. Because so so the y hat direction, I probably should put that up here. If it's in the negative direction, it's negative. If it's in the positive direction, it's positive. Sometimes we can define what's positive and negative, but as one question in the reading discussed, if they are going in opposite directions, they have to be opposite sides, whichever they are. So this is actually ends up being a subtraction. What do we get when we subtract those two? Two point eight. In the negative direction. And that's y hat. So the negative here indicates that it's in our negative direction. So really, when we add these up, what we come up with is two new vectors, one in the y direction one in the x direction. So it's getting a tug to the right, and that should be along our axis, of course, if you just wouldn't see it, of 11.3 newtons. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. That's in our x direction. And then we also have a downward or a negative direction of 2.8 newtons. Notice when I draw it, I don't really have to put the x hat and I don't really have to put the negative. But now what do you think? If, if our object here is getting a force that way and down, what's its total force going to be? Or, or what direction will its total be in? That's it? Well, they can get pulled by both of these, right? Yeah. Our total, our resultant then, <coughs> is actually right there. So let's label this F total. How can we figure out how big that F total is? What's the angle right here? 
90. So we have a, a right triangle. How do we figure out how much, how big the for, the F total force is? You bet. So F total is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares. So we get 11.3 newtons squared plus 2.8 newtons squared. And then we're after we add them, we're going to take the square root. So we get 11.6. But this is a vector. So what are we missing? Direction. Direction. Or the xy. Nope. Xy doesn't tell us very much, right? It could be any, I mean, xy could be anywhere in here. How? What we need is an angle, and then a reference point to that angle. So can't we do 13, 12, 14, roughly? How did you figure out 13 or 14, roughly? That's your calculator. Okay, you won't be able to use that, so let's use our brains. we got to be able to do this ourselves. That would be negative tangent, right? Uh, why negative tangent? Because or inverse tangent. Uh, it would be... Uh, Opposite and right, we have the opposite and adjacent sides. I prefer not to use the hypotenuse simply because that's another layer of calculation. You certainly can use like adjacent and, and hypotenuse. I prefer to go back and do the ones that have the least amount of calculation on. So that would be opposite and adjacent, 2.8 and 11.3, and that would be the tangent. You bet. What? What is happening? Well, since this is evidently not writing, we're going to work to finish this up over on this board. Um, to find that angle, as several of you have now had time to figure out on your own, it is the inverse tangent, and then we'd use the opposite over adjacent, so 2.8 newtons over 11.3 newtons. And we got, what, 14 degrees, did you say? Yeah, 13.8. 13.9, but we only have two sig figs, so we'd have to put it as 18. Um, and to complete this then, we not only have to say 14 degrees, that's not enough. We have to put it in reference to some direction. So for our total here, if we added those two vectors, we could say something like it would be 11.6 newtons, 14 degrees, but now we have to describe what 14 degrees where. What reference point or where are we measuring the 14 degrees from? From the, from the X. Not just the origin, because the origin is just a point. So we could say something like below X, or we could say in the negative direction, or for, yeah, I don't know. Below X is probably the best way to do it. Now, alternatively, sometimes, like in our first la or our vectors lab here, we're actually going to be using a compass. It's well north, south, east, and west. So that would be in the east direction. So we could do south of east. If So right now, that's how we should do it. But if this were north, south, east, west, um, we would do it like that. And I want to highlight, this, is only, this only works for if we actually have those directions, north, south, east, west. If we're talking about a coordinate system, here's the way to do it. If you say something's south of east, and we're not talking about north, south, east, west, then it doesn't make any sense. But in that case, we'd say 11.6 newtons, 14 degrees. And there are a couple different ways to say this. My preferred way, the, the way that, I, that a lot of books have it, is south of east. Now, um, in math class, I believe you would report this instead as east 
14 degrees south. Another acceptable way, but not one that I've seen except here in math in this school. But that's the way that Ms. Case will have you recording it in that class. So any, either of those would be okay for me. And we can thereby add up some vectors. Um, I'm going to put a pin in it there. We'll, probably, we'll have to talk a little bit more about vectors as we go forward. This will get you started on some of the homeworks and working those out.